Now we are going to study about atoms, how the structure of atoms, what atoms made up of, all those details we are going to now read about. What is an atom? An atom is actually the most basic part of matter. This consists of electrons, protons, neutrons and it cannot be broken down into smaller parts. It is indivisible. Over the years, in the past centuries, Greek and Indian philosophers have done many experiments about this and have come to the conclusion that atom is the most smallest ultimate part of matter. In 1808, John Dalton also conducted some experiments and came to the same conclusion that atom was the most basic part of matter. In 1830, Michael Faraday conducted an experiment using a cathode ray tube to prove this theory. 1830, in 1830, Michael Faraday surmised that by passing an electric current through an electrolytic solution, electrons would be released. To do this, he used a cathode ray tube. A cathode ray tube is a glass tube connected to a vacuum pump to keep the air inside partially vacuumized. It has two thin metal pieces on either side. One metal piece is negatively charged and called the cathode. One more metal piece is positively charged and called the anode. These two metal pieces are connected to a high voltage current. When the current is passed to the cathode and the anode, it was seen that a stream of particles moved from the cathode towards the anode. To further see this, a hole was created in the anode and on repeating this experiment, it was seen that a thin film was coated on the inside of the glass tube. This led to the assumption that there are negatively charged particles being released when a current is passed to a cathode. From this experiment, we have come to a few assumptions. That is, when a current is passed to a cathode, the particles move from the cathode to an anode. Now, what is this? We have a law saying that like particles repel each other and unlike particles attract each other. So, it is assumed that only the negatively charged particles move towards the positively charged anode. Also, this stream of particles does not depend upon either the gas which is inside the glass tube nor on what material the thin pieces of metal are made out of. These particles which are released by the cathode were given the name electrons. In 1897, J.J. Thomson performed another experiment slightly modifying the experiment that Michael Faraday did using a cathode ray tube. In this, what he added was, he added an electromagnet and electrically deflecting plates. Electromagnets supplied the positive charge and deflecting plates supplied the negative charge. On sending an electric current onto the cathode, the ray then straight, once it came under the effect of the electromagnet and deflecting plates, some particles continued on straight to the fluorescent screen and some of them deflected in other directions. This experiment was conducted by J.J. Thompson to find out the ratio of the charge of the electron to the mass of the electron. From this experiment, he surmised that greater the magnitude of the charge, the particle had greater deflection. Also, the greater the electromagnetic field and greater the electric deflecting plate's charge, greater was the deflection. Lighter the matter and greater the deflection. From this, he found out that the ratio of charge 
of electron to the mass of electron is equal to 1.758820 into 10 to the power of 11 coulombs per kg. In 1908, R. A. Milliken devised an experiment to find out the charge of an electron. The charge of the electron, which is represented by the letter E. This charge he found out through the oil drop method to be minus 1.6022 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulomb. Now we already know that J.J. Thompson found the ratio of the charge to the mass is equal to 1.758220 into 10 to the power of 11 coulomb per kg. Using this formula, we came to the calculation that mass of an electron Me is equal to 9.1094 into 10 to the power of minus 31 kg. From this experiment that R. A. Millikan did, he found out that the particles which are emitted depend upon the gas that is passed into the CRT, that is cathode ray tube. Also, the charge to mass ratio depends upon the gas and the number of protons are generally equal to the number of electrons. In 1932, Chadwick conducted another experiment in which he bombarded a thin plate of beryllium with alpha particles. This resulted in the emitting of particles which did not have any kind of charge, neither negative nor positive. And these particles he named as neutrons. In 1898, J.J. Thomson proposed that an atom was spherical in shape. That is, it represented a plum pudding. Now, if you have seen paisam, paisam will have milk, rice, semia, and it will have some cash nuts and dry grapes in it. So, imagine that the milk and the rice is positively charged particles and the electrons are the cash nut and the dry grapes. So, J.J. Thompson proposed that an atom was in that shape and positively charged particles were spread all around. In 1909, Ernest Rutherford conducted an experiment called the giga martsen experiment. In this, he surrounded a gold foil with a zinc sulfide circular screen and he bombarded it with alpha particles. These alpha particles are radioactive and once they hit the gold foil, most of the alpha particles pass through the gold foil straight onto the zinc sulfide screen. Some of them were slightly deflected and a very few of them were deflected almost 180 degrees and hit the back of the zinc sulfide screen. Now from this we surmise that most of the particles are negatively charged. From this he surmised that the atom was made out of a small positively charged center which he called the nucleus. This is surrounded by a lot of empty place and a few negatively charged particles which he called the electrons which move in circular paths called orbits. Now these negatively charged particles are what get deflected once they touch the gold foil. The electrons and neutron nucleus are held together by electrostatic forces. Thank you for watching. Visit us at netbook.in.